Okay, uh, good morning. Good to see you. Sorry, there was a little bit of uh, trouble, technical difficulties, but uh, good to see you. Everybody doing good? Yes? I asked a nice question, no? Is everybody doing well? Okay, <laughs> you give me a serious look. Okay, how, is it? how about everybody online? How are you all doing this morning? All good? Okay. We are still in the first week of classes, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> You'll survive the first week, and I'll congratulate you all next week. Awesome. So good to see you all. Let's, uh, let's just pray. Can we do that? Yeah. Um, Father, we honor you in this place. We thank you for this privilege that we have, that we can come to your presence just as we are, and to learn from you, from your word. Holy Spirit, we humble ourselves. Lord, you are our teacher. I pray that even as we learn from your word, uh, Lord, that you will pour out your wisdom, your knowledge, and your understanding, Father. I pray that our spirit would be able to understand uh, everything that you have to teach to us, Lord. I pray and I submit my tongue. Uh, speak to me, speak through me, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Um, Great. So uh, in the last class, uh, what we did is we looked at the basic definition of what praise and worship uh, is, or what worship is, isn't it? Um, can some of you share a few things that we covered in the last class? Like, what did we actually look at in the last class? What did we learn in the last class? Just very briefly, at least one point is also good. So. One thing that you learned, yes. By what when we give honor to God, that is worship. What we give, give. Right. Okay. Okay. That is worship. Okay. What else did we learn in the last class? Thank you. Worship is not about you and me. It's about God. OK, thank you. All right. Shaker says, worship. OK, thank you, Shaker. Uh, Sanjay says, worship is a lot more than just music or singing songs. Amen. Worship is all about God. Daniel Oliver says, worship is all about God. OK, awesome. Thanks, Dan. Um, Shaker again says, worship is not genre. It's not a style of music. It's not jazz, pop, rock, you know, whatever. What else? What else do you remember? Worship is a lifestyle. Yeah, amen to that. Hey, don't feel shy. OK, guys, I'm talking to you all here. OK, it's OK. There's no right answer, wrong answer. I'll keep saying this. I will not fail you if I don't like your answer. So as long as you keep smiling at me, I will not fail you. <laughs> Just kidding. So <laughs> OK, so what else? What else? Come on. Worship is what? Worship is uh, speaking your heart to God. Worship is speaking your heart to God. Thank you. Awesome. Worship is communication with God. All right. Thank you. Worship is communication with God. OK. Worship is a believer's response. OK. Someone opened the book and saw it. Thank you. It's awesome. Yeah, worship is a believer's response. OK, you respond, right? I, if, I, if someone calls you by your name, unless you're deaf, you will not respond. Yes? Or if you intentionally want to ignore the person who's called, like you, you go to some mall, shopping mall, and you see that person, you're like, oh, yo, that person. You start talking, and then they call your name. Like, Cyril, Cyril. No, you don't. You, <laughs> you choose to ignore intentionally, or you respond. It's like you turn back and say, hi, right? So worship is a believer's response, isn't it? OK, so we look at that a little bit more, all right? Sonia says, it's about worshiping in spirit and not about the beauty of the melody of the song. OK, thank you, Sonia. What else, guys? Anything else you want to share? Anything you remember from the last class? Um, 
it's about God, okay? Yeah. Lucy is saying worship is fellowship with God. Okay, thanks, Lucy. Angeline says worship is a lifestyle and not just on stage. It's how we live off stage as well. Okay, everybody say on a big amen to that. Okay. <laughs> worship is not how you just act on a stage on a Sunday morning, uh, but how you live off the stage as well if you're a worship leader and a musician okay worship gives glory to god worship so daniel is saying worship gives glory to roshan worship gives glory to cyril yes sir dan yeah dan <laughs> worship gives glory to me you know <laughs> so um, I was teaching the third years about worship ministry, and I'll just make a point. Uh, I will not teach you everything about the third years, but I was just telling them how worship ministry now, it's become like an industry. When originally worship ministry was planned as a priesthood and, and not an industry or a, or a star celebrity kind of a thing, you know? Um, OK, we'll get to third year later. But <laughs> but did you go back and just go through the notes a little bit? 100% I did, sir. I went back home and I went through all the notes because I was not too busy. It's very important. <laughs> OK, cool. So let's just go through quickly. I, what I like to do in every class is I like to revise what we did in the previous class, so just so it's fresh. Yes? Am I talking too fast? Am I going too fast? Uh, if you're not able to follow or understand, please put your hand up and say, can you repeat it? And I'll be very happy to repeat it. Only twice. <laughs> OK. Um, so we, in, we are still in chapter 1. And in the last class, we went through different definitions, right? That is in your notes. Isn't it? Um, I just want to look at one definition the, uh, again. Uh, it's the third definition by Warren Wearsby. It says, worship is the believer's response, right? Like you said, worship is the, everybody say believer's response. Thank you. Okay, worship is a believer's response of all that they are. Mind, emotions, will, and body to what God is and says and does. So if I have to convert or translate or interpret that full definition into one word, only one word comes to my mind. That is surrender. So you know, when you read the third definition, worship is a believer's response to all that they are. Um, so. I kind of conclude that whole definition to just one word. It's not just surrender. I'll add another word, absolute surrender. OK, absolute surrender. That means you, have, you are saying, I don't want to have any control over me. And what I think, how I feel, what I want to do, I'm giving you complete control, absolute surrender, right? Um, one of my uh, the stories that comes to my mind from the Bible when we talk about absolute surrender is the story of Mary, the biological mother of Jesus. Yes? So uh, what about her is, you know, the angel of God appears to Mary. Everybody's read that story, no? Yes or no? Okay. The highly favored one. Um, so angel Gabriel says, OK, you are going to bear a child. You will be with child, and you, will, you shall name him so and so, right? Now, in the Old Testament, there are hundreds of prophecies about Jesus' birth, about, about Jesus himself, right, the Messiah. In the Old Testament, hundreds of prophecies. The plan of Jesus as coming down as a son of God is God's divine plan to redeem mankind. It's the ultimate plan of God. Are you with me? 
this God's ultimate plan was to send his son, right, Jesus. Um, but all of the hundreds of prophecies of the Old Testament and God's divine plan was waiting until Mary said, be it unto me according to your will. Now, until Mary said that, nothing really happened. Are you with me? And so worship is, in a way, us saying, be it unto me according to your will. And so therefore, I surrender. I lay everything down at the altar. Are you with me? Right? Um, so uh, let's just go a little bit more deeper. Um, and we looked at one final definition by Bob Coughlin, who says, Christian worship is the response of God's redeemed people. Like, you know, we looked at that definition in your notes, and we saw how Christian worship is different from every other kind of worship, isn't it? I, yeah, all okay? So let's pause there, and we'll continue to the next page. And uh, in today's session, we'll try and understand what praise is. Okay, in the last class, we looked at how you define worship. Uh, today we'll try and understand what is praise. Okay. So how would you define praise? In Hindi you say stuti, isn't it? Correct? All right. Okay. I'm really bad in Hindi, so <laughs> so a few words I remember here and there. Okay. So okay, stuti. Uh, any other language? Praise. Aradhana. Aradhana is also praise? Or worship? That's worship. Okay. Sorry? Mahima. What is Mahima? Another word for praise? You all have to tell, okay, I don't know if it's correct or wrong. So, <laughs> um, Prasan? Prasan Sam. Okay, bro. <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> right, okay. Mahima is glory. Okay, all right. Thanks, Andrew. All right. Great. Yeah, so again, in your own words or even language, feel free to express it. How would do you define praise? How would you define praise? Sorry, bro. Lifting up someone? Okay. Honoring and lifting up someone. OK. I'll be a hype person. <laughs> OK, before making it spiritual, we'll just try and understand, you know, like, uh, then we'll become spiritual. OK, so I know. <laughs> OK, so um, Andrew says, Praise is we are boasting about the things which God has done. We are boasting, okay? All right, cool. Thanks, Andrew. To appreciate and honor, all right? Praise, stuti. Thanksgiving, okay? You know, very soon what I will do? If I see nobody who's sharing, I will point finger at you and make you stand up and I say, and we will not continue with class until you say something. Deal. I'm slightly different from other teachers, okay? So, <laughs> okay. Come on, come on, just tell me. Yeah, talk to me. Stuti or praise according to you. How do you define it? Because as Christians, we use these words too much and we use it so much that we don't think about it enough. Right. Praise and worship, oh, praise and worship, praise and worship, mindlessly, like, you know, praise and worship, praise and worship, praise and worship. But when we, when we ask to say, stop, tell me what is praise, uh, praise is praise. Praise is praise, you know, <laughs> and worship is worship. Okay. All right, everybody online, okay? You guys doing all right? Okay. Well, I see 
three of them in front of the camera, and the others are all hidden behind the veil. So I don't really know uh, what's happening, but I trust you all are doing well. <laughs> OK, so let's look at your book uh, in the notes. The definition for praise, this is according to the dictionary, OK? It says to commend. That means to appreciate and to honor, right? To commend and to applaud. Applaud means you clap, right? In English, we say, let's give this person a round of applause. Right? That means we all clap. And that means we are appreciating or acknowledging, isn't it? OK, everybody say applaud. Everybody say applaud. Did I say everybody? Everybody means what? Everybody means what? Everybody. Applaud. So everybody in the class physically present say applaud. 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 Yeah. Thanks, guys. OK. <laughs> Thank you for having my back. <laughs> That's awesome. OK, so praise means it's to commend, to appreciate, or to applaud, right? To, you're acknowledging someone, right? To express approval or admiration. That's what the dictionary says. Um, and then it goes on to say that praise is the verbal declaration of adoration and thanksgiving. OK. Praise is the, if you have a pen, marker, underline that, highlight it. OK, it says praise is the verbal declaration. Verbal means what? You are saying it or confessing it with your tongue. OK, praise is a verbal declaration. OK, once you finish highlighting, look at me. So what it's saying is, if you want to praise someone or something, you can't just say, I will praise that person in my heart. I will quietly praise. You know, are you one of those students who say, I read in my mind? Some of them read loudly, you know, the dictionary defines worship as the act of expressing love, adoration. Some of them read like that, a study like that, and some of them very quietly just stare at the book. Hmm. Oh. 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 <laughs> Wait, so when you want to express praise, you can't say that I'm expressing praise quietly or with your mouth shut. You have to express it verbally with your tongue. You declare. Are you with me? Right? And so that's. One of the definitions for praise is the verbal declaration of adoration. OK. And thanksgiving for what God has done and for what he has promised to do. Are you with me? Yeah, that is what praise is. You appreciate someone. Um, now let's look at the other thing. In your notes, everybody, it says, praise is the spiritual sacrifice that we offer to God. Everybody say, praise is the spiritual sacrifice. Praise is the spiritual sacrifice. That we offer to God. That we offer to God. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Me. Now, uh, let's go to Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. Can someone go to Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15? Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. I'll read it for us. Hebrews is after Genesis and before Revelation. OK. <laughs> OK, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. It says, through Jesus. If you haven't underlined that, underline that. Through Jesus, that is the key, secret ingredient, OK? Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name. OK, the fruit of that lips that openly profess his name. Now, let's just pause there for a second. Um, uh, 
So therefore, by him, let us continually offer the praise, the sacrifice of praise to God. Okay, guys, someone has your mic on. Please mute it. Um, so it's echoing. Oh, okay. All right, I'm going to read that verse one more time. So 13, 15 of Hebrews. Therefore, by him, through him, through Jesus, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. And verse 16 as well, but do not forget to do good and to share. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Okay. Now, when you read that verse, right? Of a sacrifice of praise, it seems like two opposites, sacrifice and praise. Like, what does it really mean? Um, because the notes says, praise is the spiritual sacrifice that we offer to God. So um, hold on a second. Um, so when you think about the word sacrifice, what comes to your mind? Sorry? Giving up? Sacrifice means, uh, in Hindi, what is it? Balidan. Balidan. Some extra weight to it, no? Laying down. It sounds better in Hindi, yeah? Laying down. To lay down. Sorry? To lay, to lay down, down. okay. To lay down. The sacrifice means to lay down. Thank you. Okay. Um, someone said something, no? Giving up. Giving up. What else? Sorry, bro. Which you love, you give up. Yeah, okay. Giving up. Now, in Hindi, it says balidan, isn't it? Balidan means what? Death, no. What happens when you sacrifice something? It doesn't die, is it? It's alive. It dies, no. So, <laughs> death. You're like, okay, how many, uh, who will come very happily to be, you know, when you say sacrifice, hey, sacrifice, I'm going to be sacrificed. You know, you think about Abraham and Isaac. Right? And Abraham is taking Isaac and going. Isaac is asking Abraham, Father, I see the wood, I see the knife, but where is the lamb? And then Abraham says, God himself will provide for himself a, a lamb, isn't it? And then it goes on to say that Abraham tied Isaac's hands and legs. He bound him. Now, Bible historians, scholars say that Isaac was at least an 18-year-old teenager. 18, how old? 18-year-old. Now, and Abraham was a hundred odd years. A hundred-year-old man versus 18-year-old young person. Who will win physically? Or who is stronger? An 18-year-old, isn't it? Yes or no? Okay, so what I'm trying to say is sacrifice is associated with laying down, surrendering. Isaac could have easily overpowered Abraham. He's like, what, you're mad or what? What is wrong with you, father? I am not going to die and all of that, okay? <laughs> You'll stab me, it seems. I will sit there quietly, it seems. Okay, not happening. <laughs> but Isaac sits very quietly. He lays down. He's giving up his right to live or be alive. Yes or no? He's willing to die. OK? So all of that is associated with sacrifice. But why does the Hebrew says in 1315 that offer up sacrifice, sacrifice of praise? Like, what does that mean? See, when we praise someone, does it cost us anything? 
cost means uh, what do I say? This is also a question to you online. But when you praise someone, does it cost you anything, like extra effort or not? How many of you have a dog? Have a dog? Okay. So we very easily praise. It's like, hey, doggy, good doggy. You know, you throw a ball, it fetches and comes back, good doggy. We praise the dogs. We praise any person who does a good job. It's like, a hey, good job leading worship. I was really blessed. So praise doesn't necessarily cost us anything. Yes or no? As Christians, some of the times we have, we don't even want to give clap offering, which doesn't cost us anything. That is like, in a way, the cheapest offering you can give, that also we don't want to give. <laughs> and so what I'm trying to say is, it's very easy for us to praise. Right? As long as you are directly benefiting from that. If you are directly benefiting, that means you are profiting from that. You respond by saying, awesome, thank you. Yes or no? And that's how it is with God in our lives, is when God blesses you with enough money, when God blesses you with a uh, you know, good job, when God blesses you with good health and everything, is like, Lord, I praise you. You're awesome. 10,000 reasons. Yes or no? But what happens when you go through something where you've been praying for a breakthrough? Maybe financial breakthrough, breakthrough in your relationships, could be with your parents or with your spouses, with your friends, but God seems far away. Does praise become easy then? No, no. The last thing you want to do when you get some bad report, you don't have a job, there's no money in the bank, there's nothing. Your first response is not to praise. Lord, I praise you because there's no money in the bank. So, are you all with me? Yes? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> now, we read Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15, isn't it? Verse 15 and 16, we read. Now, this is what we, you know, we call it as a text in English, right? It's a text. Now, in the beginning of the verse, it says, therefore. Right? Everybody say, therefore. OK. So anytime, so anytime you see therefore in the Bible, you need to ask, why is it therefore? OK. Yeah, something. Okay. <laughs> right? Anytime you see therefore in the Bible, you need to ask, okay, why is it therefore? Okay, why is the writer or the author of the you know the book saying therefore? So the Hebrew writer, the author of the book of Hebrews, what he's saying is he's addressing or he's writing to the Christian Jews of the first century. Okay? Christian Jews of the first century where they were being persecuted for being Christians. Okay, what the author of the Hebrews is saying is, hey, I know you are being persecuted. Don't give up your faith in Jesus. Okay, because in those days, in the first century history, if you become a Christian Jew, you do not have access to the temple. Okay. You cannot practice any of those Jewish uh, celebrations or offer, you know, take part in the sacrifices. You can't go to the temple, you don't have a right, and then you can't offer up sacrifices. So the author of Hebrews is saying, don't worry. It's okay if you lose all those rights of going to the temple and offering up sacrifices. Instead, what is better is offer up praise which is the sacrifice of praise. Sacrifice your right to be the Jew. Are you with me? You sacrifice the right to be the Jew. Sacrifice the right to go to the temple and offer that sacrifices of the lamb and whatnot. But instead, offer sacrifice of praise. And that is the context. 
right? Are you with me? Following? OK. Thank you. So then it goes on to say, very important, verse 15, of a sacrifice of praise to God, that is the fruit of our lips. Okay, everybody say fruit. Okay, so fruit. again, what in Hindi? Pal. Correct. Yes? All right. Okay. 100 out of 100 for me. Yeah? <laughs> now, fruit is a what? It, what is a fruit? When you think of fruit, what is it? Do you plant a tree with the fruit? Do you plant a tree with a fruit? How many of you have done gardening? <laughs> Even if you haven't done gardening, you should know this. You no. sow the seed, isn't it? From the seed, you get the tree. From the tree, it bears a fruit. Yes or no? OK. Now, here he's saying, offer up sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips. That is the fruit of our lips. Now, OK. Let's take the word fruit. Now, uh, a fruit can be raw. Hey, guys, fruit can be raw. Yes. No, no. <laughs> or the fruit can be ripe. Fruit can be raw or ripe. Isn't it? Kai, follow. It can be uh, sweet or rotten, spoiled. No? It can be sweet or rotten. And also, the fruit can be seasonal or continual throughout the year available. Yeah? OK. So now, again, let's go back to the verse. <laughs> OK. Uh, it says, the sacrifice of praise, that is the fruit of our lips. Now, think about everything we do with our lips. We speak, no? OK. So let's, if the fruit can be raw or ripe, let's go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. It says, okay, everybody there? Cyril? Okay. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. It says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. All right. So Ephesians 4.29 says, let uh, no corrupt word, like uh, a rotten word, or in other words, a raw word, OK? Because with the same lips and mouth, we used to praise God, isn't it? We'll come to that verse in just a second. Okay, one more verse. Let's go to um, James chapter 1, verse 26. James chapter 1, verse 26. We have time, right? Okay. James chapter 1, verse 26. If anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his own art, this one religion is useless. Okay. If anyone among you thinks uh, he is religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his own heart, this one religion is useless. So that means he's saying if you don't have control over your tongue, what you follow and what you say is useless. OK? Can we read some more scriptures? Can we read some more? OK, same book. If it, uh, James chapter, let's go to James chapter 3.
James chapter 3, verse 9, 10, and 11. James chapter 3, verse 9, 10, 11, it says, With it, what? With what? With the tongue, right? With the mouth, with lips. With it we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men. <clears throat> Not me, sir. I don't do it. Okay. Who have been made in the similitude of God. Verse 10. Out of the same mouth, Proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Shouldn't be like that. Verse 11, it says, Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter water from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Let's stop there, okay? So verse 12, it ended with, the tree and the fruit. Isn't it? Verse 12, it says, Can a fig tree bear olives? But olive is a fruit of the olive tree. Figs is a fruit of the fig tree. So again, we're coming back to that original point or the verse, fruit of our lips. The fruit of your lips can either be raw or ripe, pleasing to one's heart. It can be sweet or it can be rotten. And I also said, the fruit can be seasonal or continual. It can be seasonal or continual. Now let's look at that verse again. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 15. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 15. It says, therefore, through Jesus Christ, let us continually. Okay. Continually. Now, there are some fruits that is available continually throughout the year, like apples, oranges, lemons, coconuts, avocados, uh, and bananas. They are not seasonal fruits. They are available throughout the year, from January to December. And there are some fruits that are seasonal. But what the writer of the Hebrew, what the Word of God is saying is, let not your praise be seasonal. That means when you're going through good season, I will praise you. Let's read Psalm 34, verse 1, quickly. Let's someone. Psalm 34, verse 1. Uh, if someone has a Kannada or a Tamil Bible, or a Hindi also is fine, I want you to read Psalm 34, verse 1. Okay, I'll read it. Is, are you there? Psalm 34, verse 1. It says, I will bless the Lord at sometimes, good times, when I feel like, only Sunday morning. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be on my lips, right? Okay, now in Kannada or Tamil or other language, it says, it's called Ella Kalangalilum. That means in every season, in every season, your praise will continually be on my lips. Are you with me? Right? And so here's the thing. Um, I know we've read a lot of scriptures. Let's just finish with one last scripture. Let's go to Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 and 19. Habakkuk, it's like, sir, where is that book, sir? <laughs> I'll wait. Okay, Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 and 19. Okay, when you're there, say amen. Okay, turn amen. in your iPhones, turn in your Google phones, Android phones too, if that is easy. Okay, how many of your favorite book is Habakkuk in the Bible? Nobody will raise their hands. No? So, Dan, don't lie. Okay. <laughs> okay, Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 to 19, it says, it's a very famous, popular scripture. It says, though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes in the vines, 
though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. Isn't that lovely? And so that verse is saying, in the good season or in the bad season, in the good times or in the bad times, I will choose to praise you. Are you with me? Yes? And so, and that's where I want to kind of leave a pause today, uh, and leave us, is we've looked at the definition for praise and worship. Okay? Yeah, a couple of years ago, I did an activity with the, with the youth, with the young people in church. Um, I was do we were doing a series on the power of words. So we split them into teams, and I gave them a toothpaste tube, you know, small toothpaste tube. And I said, OK, I'll time you all. Whoever pushes all of the toothpaste out of the tube first is the winner. So I said, on your mark, get set, go, and started the clock. Everybody, you know, every, you know they all won. I didn't tell them about the second part of the game. The second part of the game was put all the toothpaste back inside the tube and see who wins. How many of you think they did it? <laughs> no one did it. Not even one person, obviously. It's impossible, isn't it? And so that was just an activity to kind of talk about. It's very easy to shoot the words off your mouth. And it's not easy to take it back. Once released, is released, isn't it? And so when we talk about praise and the fruit of our lips, um, you know, there are so many things for us to ponder about. Right? How beautiful is your fruit? Does your fruit look acceptable, right? Is it, is it a good offering that is acceptable to God? Um, and so just remember that we looked at we looked at worship, we looked at praise, and we choose to praise Him uh, in every season of our lives. You know, one of the most beautiful things about praise and worship is the Bible, the Psalms says, all of creation, they do not have a choice. The Psalmist says, the trees of the field clap their hands in praise. Psalm 19, verse 1 and 2 says, the heavens declare the glory of God. Day and night they pour forth speech. Psalm 95 says, the deep sea creatures praise him. So all of the creation does not have a choice, but they praise. Only you and I have a choice to praise and worship. We can choose to praise and worship him. That is why it's very special. Are you with me? Right? See, our situations. Our circumstance, they keep changing. One day you will have a good day. Another day you will have a very good day. And the third day you will have a very bad day. Isn't it? Up and down. Sometimes you are having going through an amazing season in life. God is, you know, it seems like God is blessing everything you're touching. Everything you touch is turning into gold. And then there's a season in life where everything is dry. You, you feel like you're going through the valley of the shadow of death. Why I'm saying this is our, our life, our situations and our circumstances, they change. Good, bad, good, bad, good, bad. But who's the unchanging one? God. His worth, his worth never changes. His worth, regardless if you're going through a good time or bad time, good season or bad season, his worth never changes. Are you with me? He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Right? And so that's why God tells Joshua in Joshua chapter 1, he says, as I was with Moses, 
I will be with you. Like, just like how I was with Moses, I will be with you. Moses, your leader, might have died and gone. Don't worry. I am still the same. That's more important, isn't it? OK, so um, that's what I wanted to leave us with uh, today uh, and before we continue into the next chapter. So uh, if you have any questions or uh, those online, feel free to post it on the stream section. Uh, I'd be more than happy to address that. Uh, but through the session, I hope you were with me and uh, everything is OK. All right, thanks for joining in, guys. Lovely seeing you all online. Take care and uh, God bless you. I'll see you next week. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. God bless. Bye. Amen. Be blessed.